Good morning, everybody. Nice to see you here on the last day of the fair. So I hope you had a good fair so far. Um, what I want to show you today um, is our vision of um, payments development and how payment can change um, the experience of travelers. Just a bit of an introduction of Wirecard. Wirecard is a technology company. So we're combining technology know-how together with banking services. We've got our own bank in the group. And um, this combination helps us to bring out new products, pioneer products, and enhance um, the way of payment um, for our clients, for our merchants. We've been founded in 1999, Munich-based um, TechDucks public company. Um, that's where I see where the focus is extremely on technology. Um, those figures are from our 2014 annual report, so I think we now exceeded the 3,000 employees mark already. Um, and the combination of both our full German banking licenses, Wirecard Bank AG, plus a UK e-money license helps us not to only process credit card payment transactions, but we are also issuing cards, co-branded cards, loyalty cards, um, and in addition, we can take care of merchant services and acquiring for our customers. When we look into transport and um, travel companies, um, we build around our solutions, of course, around the transport company, but we only, not only focus on them, so we see a lot of other partners involved in there. So we've got a retailer environment uh, in the station, who can be and should be addressed as well when we look into a smooth um, travel experience, journey experience for, for a passenger. And you can add more and more partners when it comes to loyalty systems. When you go on um, trains, you've got different caterers on the train as well. So where we see it's not only the transport company itself, the passenger interacts when he's going on a ride, but it's much more parties involved where we focus. And in the next, Little journey, we've got a journey of six stops, six stops where we want to show you some um, use cases where we see how payment can enhance the travel experience for the passenger and also um, yeah, help him get a smooth feeling and um, get some more information, especially about loyalty, etc. So each use case is um, starting with a little video as an introduction and then we're gonna go a bit more into details with that. So first thing, of course, what's um, more or less the standard when it comes to payment services, um, everyone's talking about omni-channel, so of course it's important that the customer or the passenger can pay with his preferred method of payment in all channels. So either if it's here as he's buying a ticket um, at the cashier, or he wants to pay online, he wants to pay in the app, or he wants to go to a vending machine, so everything has to work the same um, for him without any interruption. Um, important here is really the seamless linking um, of the payment with the bonification. So you don't want to wait, um, like with some airlines, um, two weeks until you see a points or miles credited to your account. So with the linkage of the bonification system directly to the payment transaction, you immediately have the, um, the success. So you immediately see in your app you earned this many points um, and give the passenger a good feeling and says, yes, he's been rewarded immediately. Um, very important for us, as Luke's been talking about data, for us data protection is also, of course, um, very important. Here PCI DSS is the credit card data security standard which has to be obeyed, so where we help our merchants, um, of course, to protect themselves and don't get them in touch with live credit card data, so to ensure they have um, no data security issues there. 
combining, especially when we look into a wallet uh, mobile app solution, um, combining loyalty with it is very important. So here we've got um, all integration method into single or multi-partner programs. So as we saw the um, first slide where we looked into retailers, so of course you can give points or miles or whatever you want to call it um, for the pure rail journey, for example. But it makes it interesting if you go to the coffee shop at the station and you can earn miles there as well and ideally spend them as well. So you can start with easy stamp card solutions which are virtually in the app. So for each ride or each coffee, you get a virtual stamp. And um, all these events can be customized by the merchant himself. Um, so giving it very easy access. And um, the transport company as the platform doesn't have to invest too much um, effort into this. Um, so it can be run by the, by the merchants. We go on. We've got the next stop in our um, little customer experience journey. And give you again a little intro. The attractiveness of a bonification program is, of course, you've got everything on your mobile. So get rid of an additional plastic or paper card or number, which you usually don't have with you when you need it. Um, and that's really helping then as well also to perform the payment through a wallet, for example. So if you have your mobile device out already to scan it, to redeem a voucher, for example, or to register for, um, for bonification points, um, why not pay with it immediately? So there's no breach um, in, in the process, so he's got his uh, mobile out there as well, and through NFC tab performs the payment with it immediately. So it can increase really also awareness um, for partners, again, the retailers in a shop, so um, they also generate um, increased revenues because they can attract people um, to, their, to their shops with vouchers. They can define for themselves um, and help um, yeah, increase the, the experience for, um, for, for the passenger. Um, we saw a little example of the stamp card here as well, um, which is the easiest way of uh, um, performance. As I said, the platform provider, the transport company, can define rules in which each single participating merchant then defines his individual campaigns. So a very process-friendly uh, um, thing to do. So the merchant defines it themselves. The platform provider can decide if he wants to check the um, vouchers or bonification systems the individual merchant set up. Um, and um, this is working um, very smooth. We see that with um, Orange Cash in France, for example where a couple of thousand merchants participated within eight weeks and set up their own campaigns and um, voucher solutions. What we saw in that um, little movie as well, um, we've got the solution also to have a coupon validation, which is very important, um, especially if you look into a station where you've got a very diversified um, till system um, structure. Um, there we have a solution with a little piece of hardware, also connect, um, so-called connected POS, which can be added to each cashier system, which got a print stream, which every cashier system has. Um, and that can bring even a bit outdated cashier system online. So in there, we've got connectivity through GPRS or Wi-Fi or whatever is available. So um, we can validate vouchers online um, 
and help there the customer, of course, to use them. Um, with that um, solution, we're just um, about to launch a pilot as well for an Alipay um, POS payment, which, of course, mainly attracts Chinese um, travelers um, visiting Europe and um, want to pay their cards with their Alipay app as well. Um, you can drive that further, of course, um, when we've got the loyalty system um, with, um, yeah, location-based um, services, so you can route somebody to the next bistro, you can route them to the shop where he can find and redeem his voucher. Um, notifications can be sent out, where we come later on as well, and um, of course give them really personalized services. Um, if he's waiting or the customer or the, the train is delayed, he gets a voucher for a free coffee or 50% off the next coffee. So next stop on our little journey. Upgrades and upsells are, of course, very important for a transport company. And um, with a mobile app, you have direct, real-time access to the passenger. So um, you don't need to only ask him two days in advance by an email if he wants to buy an upgrade on, uh, to, to first class. Um, you can push that and see it. He's currently waiting at the station. You could localize him by GPS or by Bluetooth uh, beacons and um, see he's waiting and push him that message and say, hey, do you want to buy an upgrade into first class? Um, and then also give him the option not only to pay with a credit card or payment of method he's um, put behind into his profile, but also use your um, loyalty points. So you can burn these as well, which is important. So you want to have, uh, don't want to have the passengers um, collect more and more. Um, you want to have them to burn them. And um, here with our full German banking license, um, we can support um, our merchants um, and add additional value also with credit and insurance services um, where we as the bank, ha bank have the license for. We can have uh, payments um, with points, um, microloans, pay later is a very important topic coming up as well. And um, we see the insurance topic, so you know you cross a border on an international rail trip um, and push out a message and say, hey, do you want to try and purchase uh, health insurance for the Netherlands? Um, because perhaps your um, German one doesn't cover that. Um, so really get additional revenues on the go with a very little effort um, you have to put in place and especially no additional personal um, effort you have to invest into it. We go on to the train now. I think it's really important if you set up a loyalty program and you've got various tiers in there as well, that your premium travelers, premium passengers are rewarded not only because they've got a red tag like with Lufthansa on their backs or something like that, so they're identified. Either we get the information already through the reservation system, you know, the reservation data, which, which seat he's been located to, or again, combination of um, Bluetooth beacons, so you can push a message out um, to the train attendant 
and um, identify um, premium customers and then give them a little um, reward, which is not a big effort, like a free coffee or something like that, but really feel them uh, yeah, known and rewarded immediately as well. Again, it comes back to the um, collection redemption of points, ordering from the place, so you don't have to have the trolleys push through the train, so you can order directly, you can push out um, the menus if the trolley is arriving as well, so that you speed up the process of ordering as well. And again, in the end, um, it's all coming about upselling and generating new revenues also on the go um, with the passenger who's already on your train. We saw a little um, solution also with an MPOS, mobile POS um, solution, um, which is a piece of hardware, so it's a card reader, um, which connects via Bluetooth to any mobile device. Um, many train companies already have mobile devices in place for their train attendants, um, so adding um, a, a software development kit to add payment functionality um, is not too much um, of, of a deal there. Um, and you can easily produce and give out payment modules in a high number. So the cost for, for that Bluetooth low readers is, of course, a fraction of that when you look into a full-fledged um, POS terminal. Um, we talk about probably a fifth of that price, so it's uh, much easier to give out high numbers of that and give the passengers the possibility to pay when they actually want to. It's important to generate relevance. So if you see there's a delay in the train, um, you don't want to push out um, probably a message to everyone who's bought a ticket for that train because they, you don't know if they're actually on that train or if they're there and, um, already. So again, with Bluetooth uh, beacon technology, you can identify who's already waiting at the track and push out a message to them and give them a little voucher for a download um, or again a coffee voucher or anything so you don't want to push that out to everyone who's probably not even on that train and different, doesn't give you any effect but the ones really waiting there um, they will appreciate it again of course don't know, need to tell you about too much about beacon technology so I um, guess we are on an IT transfer so we can skip that um, a little here So we're getting off our train now and leaving the station. So again, very important, of course, direct customer feedback so you can touch on your um, trip immediately. Um, we see a very high trend in wearables coming up, um, not only um, for payments and loyalty topics as well. Um, access control is a big topic when you look into um, stadiums, um, fun parks, etc., and identification. So with an RFID chip, in, um, and that has, doesn't have to be like a jawbone thing um, like it looks here, so it can be really low-cost rubber bands, rubber wristbands already, which are around um, $2 per piece, where you've got an RFID chip inside, which you could easily spread to really a lot of people and um, give them the possibility to have access to pay directly to identify them themselves and put a proxy card behind it, so either they put a other credit card behind it to fund um, their, their payments with it, or you have prepaid accounts, so giving all possibilities again. And there it gets um, yeah, further and further futuristic, so Google Glass, um, everything's going to be connected. Um, I think the first guys started to implement RFID chips under their skin, so um, don't know if that's going to be the future or not. Um, but this is really something where you say you're not only concentrating on a mobile device, but you're identifying and moving on um, much quicker with that as well. 
In the end, just a little additional film summarizing also some new scenes. So now we are um, in London and giving you a little ride on the tube and combined with payment here. Wirecard's vision is to provide travelers with a best-in-class multi-country and multi-scheme payment solution. All payment, as well as domestic transit cards, are safely stored inside a state-of-the-art NFC mobile wallet. Deeply integrated with next-generation wearables, the Wirecard wallet becomes the perfect companion for regular cross-border travelers and tourists. Let's take a quick look at the details of our solution. Wirecard Wallet knows the city and country you've just arrived in. Depending on your location, as well as your past behaviour, it automatically suggests or even selects the best suited card. As a global leader in payment technologies, Wirecard supports a wide range of domestic and international options for funding the wallet. With its built-in auto top-up feature, the wallet makes sure that each card is always loaded with the right amount of money. Paying for goods and transport is only the beginning. Every tap is also a chance to redeem cashbacks and take part in loyalty campaigns. And by leveraging Wirecard's state-of-the-art card-linked offers engine, all this becomes possible without any changes to the merchant's infrastructure. Travelling around new cities used to be a daunting experience. Not anymore. Wirecard Wallet integrates with your calendar to find out when and where you need to be next. In cooperation with the local transit payment issuers, it suggests the best available connections for you. Once you're on the move, it will calculate required transit fares and trigger a top-up if required. Step-by-step -step navigation makes sure you reach your destination on time. Now all you need is to tap in at the gate and enjoy your journey. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jan. Do we have any questions from the audience to Jan? No one? Jan, and if someone has any questions, where is your stand? Where can We're they just find you? Over there, stand A102. So please look around, and um, if you have anything, just oh. drop by. Thank you very much, Jan. Uh, round of applause, please. Thank you.